attack far more quickly. It's really taking the punch away, so. Okay, so let's talk about Maximus, which is a compressor. An expander. A limiter. And even a multiband saturation plugin. So Maximus doesn't work like a conventional compressor. It's got a slightly different layout and different way of working and thinking. Um, everything compressor and limiter and expander wise is all set up from the, what's effectively a grid system, a graph system over here on the left hand side. And what we've got running across the bottom is our input. And what we've got running vertically is our output. So if we were to have a, a linear line go like this, it's exactly equal to input and output. So anything we play into it would actually remain unaffected when we haven't got things like saturation engaged. And it wouldn't even matter how much gain we add, no matter what we do. No effect will take place. However, by default, it is set to limiting here. And if you have a look right here on the right hand side, we've got a grid in dB and you'll notice that this is zero decibels. So now, no matter what we do, it will never pass zero dB, but the audio remains linear and unaffected until it reaches that zero decibel point. only does it do that on this one point here as you can see here on the left hand side we've got low mid high and master so it does that across three frequency bands and a master processor meaning you can have saturation compression expansion all happening separately on different bands and then perhaps limiting on the master allowing for you to change what you're doing an incredible amount so what I've done here is I've put this uh, instrumental into FL Studio and just running it into Maximus. It's the mix version, so there's lots of dynamics. It hasn't been limited at all. Um, if you do like the instrumental, it's available on the Warrior Sound Beat Tape Volume 2, which is on Spotify and Apple Music. You can check that whole thing out there. And uh, essentially, we can use it to reshape and add some tonality and different things to our track in a kind of unusual way. So it will work a lot like a traditional compressor if we want it to. So where we've got our input, we can use our point here and bring this down. And this is like bringing the threshold down on a compressor. So now our input's going to achieve uh, past this point and then compression will start engaging. And that compression will be based here. So this is like having our ratio and we have a curve on here, so that's like introducing a hard or soft knee as well. That's how quickly that compression engages. We can then bring this down as well, and then it will also limit to that volume. So if we were to play that back now, you can see now it's capturing the most extreme parts, and as we can see here, compression is definitely occurring. Soften it, make it more subtle. That allows us to dial it back quite a bit more. And because we can do that multi band, we can adjust the balance of the mix. So if we were to take low, for example, we could 
really compress that kick a bit more. We are able to solo it just here. So we'll just hear the low end now. And perhaps if it hasn't got everything in it you need, over here we've got our band adjustment and we can view the bands just by clicking next to the monitor here. And we can see that goes up to sort of 200 hertz. Let's just bring it to sort of 250 kind of area. So we've got a bit more of that kick in there. And what we could do, we could just increase the gain here, just using the pre-gain. We could just give it, say, 3 dB more, and really increase the level, changing that balance. Now when we unsolo it, our low end is going to be far more pronounced. That's perhaps a little bit much, so maybe we would use some compression, dial it back a bit, just really soft knee. And we've pushed it up 3 dB, so it's compressing a little bit earlier than it would have before. And it's still louder, it's being brought back a little bit. In sort of traditional compressor sense, we've got an attack and release as well, can make it attack far more quickly. It's really taking the punch away, so dial the attack upwards a bit more, let those transients still snap through. Now we've got a release here as well. The release can go incredibly quick and we can actually have it occur so quickly that it starts to distort, which can give us quite a nice effect as well. So let's try that out, soloed. So it's saturating the low end a little bit here. And we can take that even further. We could actually use either of the saturation algorithms here. There's two. Depending on which way we turn the threshold, we have two different versions. Um, if we push it to the right, we see the saturation starts to creep in from the top. This means when the audio reaches that particular level, it will begin to saturate like soft clipping. Um, and we can change that ceiling level and where it starts to occur. If we were to bring the threshold to the left, the whole channel's lit up and the soft clipping doesn't occur until the audio starts to exceed it and this can be far more extreme. Or just add a little bit of distortion and flair to the sound. So we'll unsolo it now. And what we do is we'll turn the compression off and uh, back on and just have a listen to what it's doing. Yes, yeah, so we've lifted up a lot of that low end. We've added some distortion, extra body in there. but it's only affecting the low end. We can play around with this as much as we really like. And let's take into account, let's say in the mid range, for example, we, we want this snare to be a little bit faster and sharper. This is where we could maybe use some expansion. So let's solo this. Now this is covering a big area of sound. We can use high here to dial it back and say we only want this to really happen at 2k. We've got quite a, a narrowish band in the middle now. By pulling this back here, we're actually going to be increasing in amplitude. But we're increasing in amplitude based on the compression settings. It can be really quite extreme with it. change to the balance of our track. Let's introduce a bit of saturation here as well. Quite nice. 
Now, you can see a nice representation occurring here where the peaks are being cut off with this soft clipping. You can be extreme with it, and it's very, very obvious. We lose the transients. taking this to the extremes. Bear in mind we've added all this extra dynamic anyway. Quite a nice effect. This is how it would sound without the master compression. Instead of compressing the master now, we could look at having a function that's just the limiter. give ourselves some extra gain. That's a pretty big difference. Let's just A and B having what we've done with Maximus on and off. So we're going to be off at first and then we'll re-enable it after a few bars. We've made some pretty drastic changes there by adding a little bit of expansion with compressed, limited, and saturated the low end, and then just overall gained up and limited the master track. Now, something really useful to note, these snap around on the grid here. Um, you might want to be far more subtle with it and go just below zero dB. So we can just turn off the snap to grid here and we can bring this down in very small increments now. And you can see just up at the top of FL Studio exactly what those readouts would be. So we're now set at 0.3 dB for our limiting. Push the low even more. Let's just try saturating the whole mix now. We've just used some post makeup gain to make up the lost level saturation. have it a vastly louder and improved and tweaked instrumental in only a couple of minutes. I'm hoping that that was useful for you. Now I've got a bit more of an understanding of how Maximus functions and how that you can make use of it. And that uh, if you need to see more videos on this, just let me know in the comments below and I will get them together for you. Thank you very much for watching.